Baron Nasher is a core part of League of Legends. Successfully killing the most powerful neutral objective in Summoner's Rift grants the team a very strong buff that can help you extend your lead and close out a match, or even crawl back from a deficit. Today, we're going to take a look at how to set up for a Baron, as well as some important mechanics to take into account. It's time to level up. Before starting Baron, it's important to note some important mechanics when facing this neutral objective. Baron has multiple types of basic attacks. A single target spit, which is the main attack, an AoE frontal smash that lands every 10 seconds, and a single target rear spike attack. A 50% damage debuff is applied to whoever is tanking the Baron. The debuff lasts for 15 seconds and refreshes on each attack. If a new champion starts tanking Baron, the debuff will switch to that champion. Over time, Baron applies an armor and magic resistance debuff to everyone fighting it. The debuff applies more frequently to whoever is tanking the objective, and it can reduce up to 50 armor and magic resistance. Baron also has abilities that happen once every 6 auto attacks. Every one of them deals damage. While the 3 pools of acid will also slow you, and the tentacle attack will knock up targets. There's also an area of effect rear spike attack that will happen if there are more members in the back of the pit than in the front. With all of this in mind, here are some things you should remember when killing Baron. First, do not stack at the back of the Baron pit to avoid stunning your team. Second, make sure the tankiest members on your team are the ones drawing the Baron's aggro. And third, rely on visual cues to dodge Baron's special attacks and avoid taking extra damage. Now that the basics are out of the way, let's look at how to take down this mighty beast. The first thing that you need in order to secure the Baron is vision control around the objective. In order to gain this, you must have control over the minion waves. By pushing out both mid and top lane, this gives you access to the river, where you can clear out any of the opposing team's vision. Once you gain vision over the river, you want to return to the lanes to once again push them in. Now that waves have been pushed and you already have control over the river, you want to start warding up the enemy jungle. Work together to move into the enemy jungle and start clearing out vision so that everything is lit up for you and everything is in darkness for your enemy. You now want to return to your lanes to push them out once more. The situation that you want to create is one where your opponents don't know what's going on. If they face check, there's a risk of them getting caught and killed. If they don't, they could lose a Baron. So what if you're not in the lead? In these situations, there's more room for the opposition to challenge you. They are more willing to face check, go for skirmishes, or perhaps have enough wave clear that they can set up before you. In these situations, sidling control and taking advantage of back timings is even more important. Creating slow pushes in the bot lane is one of the ways to find an opening. By creating a wave that will threaten the tower on the other side of the map, you can put pressure on your opponents to catch that wave. In this window of opportunity, you can bring your player up from the bot lane to join the rest of your team and start threatening the Baron with a numbers advantage, making it harder for the enemy team to challenge. While this is being set up, keeping mid lane pushed in is important in order to get access to the river to control and deny the enemy vision. By doing this back and forth of trading pushes around the map, there will be windows of opportunity for you to force the Baron and look to secure it. A good example of this is what Vitality did in their game against Origin. They took advantage of Origin's players backing after clearing out vision and grabbing objectives, and pushed back mid and top lane. In the meantime, Cavashard fully pushed in the bot lane so that two consecutive waves would hit the bottom tower. Once Cavashard sees Nukeduk in the bot lane without his teleport, he teleports to the Baron to help his team burn the objective. If Vitality are contested, it's unlikely that Origin will be able to have all five of their members as Rise is too far away. When in a bigger deficit, things can become a bit more complicated, but the gist of it is to stick together and try to force a numbers advantage. The team ahead might spread out to maximize their control over three lanes, which can give the losing team access to contest the Baron by moving in as a unit. You have to accept that when behind, you have to make sacrifices in order to group up and challenge these neutral objectives. Securing Baron can be more complicated than what meets the eye, both in terms of setup and execution. However, I hope this gives you some insight into the basics. Be sure to check out part 2 where we'll cover more on Baron education. If you can't wait for future episodes, be sure to tune into the LEC where you can gain even more experience to level up. Until next time.